Howdy everybody, I'm Sam Feifel, I'm the editor of SparPointGroup.com. I'm here with Elliot Duff and John Chicken. And uh, people are very excited about this uh, floppy thing you have in your hand here. Can you, what is this? Well, we call it uh, Zebedee, after Magic Roundabout. Um, for, and the idea is, is to, uh, it's a mobile mapping solution, mm -hmm. handheld. And the intention is to map a building in the speed that it takes you to walk around it. Okay. Um, so the, basically it consists of a, a fairly standard off-the-shelf uh, consumer grade LiDAR. Mm -hmm. There's a IMU in here. And the secret of the technology is for it to swing around like this. So what is the, how, why does the swinging help? I don't understand. Well, what you need is to scan the environment. Mm -hmm. So this is a 2D LiDAR and you need to have it moving in three dimensions. Now, one convention is to trawl it. But what we really want to do is this system to re-see the world. It needs to scan, re-scan. And what's behind the technology is, is a system called scan matching. Okay. And so what happens is, as it scans the environment once, and then comes back and scans it again, in that time, the sensor has moved. Sure. And in that motion, what it sees has moved. And it says, well, basically, if all those, if the environment has moved, I must be moving. And so it estimates its own trajectory. Interesting. So now, John, you guys are 3D laser mapping. You've licensed this technology. You're going to be selling it. Be who, do you, it to market, yes. who do you expect actually wants to buy this? Who's the target market? What are the applications? Well, with our history in, in mining applications, we have a lot of, see a lot of potential in the mining industry. Uh, the indoor surveying <clears throat> market is also uh, a lot of potential in that we see. And also in emergency services for uh, uh, emergency services going into to rescue situations and being able to uh, extract information and people as quick as possible. Sure. Now, my readers, their first question, Every time is always accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. How can it be accurate enough? It's floppy. It's okay. you know commercial. You know, how how do you make sure that it has the accuracy that they need for the application? Okay, so accuracy is a very hard thing. We know the sensors precision and accuracy. So locally, it has it's it's reasonably accurate to centimeter resolution. Mm -hmm. But globally, or network accuracy is is hard to establish because it really depends on the features that it sees. Now in this environment, in this hall we have lots of features that the thing can lock onto, sure. right? But if I was in a long straight corridor with no pillars and no features, the system will slip. And so um, to say how it globally, how accurate it is globally, it's very difficult to say, it depends on the environment. However, what's critical about it is that the trajectory that's estimated is globally consistent with the, what it sees. So it's a global consistent trajectory. Mm -hmm. And that is critical for navigating an environment. If you wish to get in and out of an environment, such as the emergency responder, or in my case, we're a robotics group, yep. we want a robot to get out of a building. So it's very important that when we create maps, that we're not hung up about accuracy. What we're really interested in is global optimization or global right. consistency. We don't need millimeter accuracy to make sure we can get through the door. If it's yep. a couple of centimeters, we're happy. Well, what's interesting is that because the system's using the environment to, uh, basically it's doing uh, registration continuously, mm -hmm. is that the door will always be in the same location. That's how it works. Right? <laughs> when it sees anywhere. the door, door the second time, it says that's the same door, the solution snaps on. Exactly. Now, so John, uh, you know, what, what are the, you know, it sounds great, you know, is it just educating the market that this thing exists? What, what are the sort of barriers to this kind of technology being adopted? Well, first of all, we need to educate the market, as you said, but also the, the barriers to entry are reduced because the, the capital investment is, is much lower. Uh, we have a, we're working on a pricing model that, that will make it very accessible to, to new users uh, and, and really opening the doors and, and educating the market again, right. to use your phrase. Now, so is this available globally? Can I only get it in the UK? No. You know, what are the sort of details no, around it, that? It is available globally. Okay, great. Well, Elliot, John, thanks so much for explaining this to our readers. Thanks you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.